Let's try to look at uh, the history uh, briefly. In the first century, during the times of the apostles, they came out of Judaism into the New Testament church. Judaism to the New Testament church. That was the first century. In the fifth century, the church got into the dark ages. And in the 16th century, the church walked out from Roman Catholicism to the Protestant religion. So this is how it has come. It's very, very broad, very broad. There are so many small details here and there which I have left out. As I told you, a generation has come which does not know anything about, just like the generation came which did not know Joseph. A generation has come which does not know anything about these reformers. The main truth that was restored in Reformation, as we all know, the just shall live by faith. Do you know that this important text occurs four times in the Bible? Not many texts, not exactly verbatim occurs four times in the Bible. Prophecy of book of Habakkuk. Second chapter, fourth verse. Behold, he is proud, his soul is not upright in him. Obviously somebody who thinks of his own goodness, his own righteousness. But, you know, con uh, conventional translations, conservative translations, keep this conjunction but in that. But the just shall live by faith. The next occurrence is in Romans, the classic passage which revolutionized the very thinking of uh, Martin Luther. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it... The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. Now Paul is now here quoting prophet Habakkuk. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now the third occurrence is in Galatians when Paul was dealing with the problem of whether or not believers also should be circumcised. He's just bringing out this truth again. Whenever there was a doctrinal problem, you know, Paul brought up this truth. Look at Galatians and chapter 3, verse 11. No one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. It's open. It's transparent. Because the just shall live by faith. The fourth and the final occurrence in this in Hebrews 10th chapter, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. You see, it is given in the context of the second coming of Jesus Christ. It says in verse 37, Just a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. So it is difficult to hold on to faith until then, because Jesus himself asked, When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? So it says in verse 38, Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back or goes back from this foundational truth and doctrine, my soul has no pleasure in him. Four times. Every time I read that, I am excited and I am encouraged in my walk of faith with God. It's a great encouragement. But why is this uh, emphasis given so much, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament? It is just to contrast between what the Old Testament teaching is and the New Testament teaching. Deuteronomy 6th chapter and verse 25. Then it will be righteousness for us when if we are careful to observe all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. I will try to paraphrase it. We must take the commandments of God verbatim as God has commanded us. We should not leave out anything. We should observe all the commandments of God. And we should not be casual about them. We should be careful to observe all the commandments. Only if we observe all the commandments as the Lord has commanded us, it will be righteousness for us. It's miserable. It's miserable. Because it is impossible. That's what has brought every man under sin. But when you come to the New Testament, look at the contrast. Third chapter of book of Romans. Now in this uh, season, I recommend that we read at least a book of Romans a dozen times and you will not regret this exercise. Romans third chapter 
I read from verse 21. But now, a dispensational change. But now, the righteousness of God apart from the law. The word apart, very strong. Apart from the law. You lay it aside and then you walk into a totally a new arena. Apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is through faith in Jesus Christ. To all and on all. So to all and on all. That is the all-inclusiveness. For there is no difference. The Old Testament, if you do these things, if you do all these things, if you carefully do all these things, if you carefully do all these things as God has promised, you will live. The New Testament, apart from the law, faith. Amen? That's the wonderful thing. Somebody said like this, Old Testament says do, New Testament declares done. Old Testament says do, or demands do, and New Testament declares done. Now, but the Old Testament Jews, they had a problem. You know what the problem is? Let us spell that out also. Romans 10 chapter, Paul is literally lamenting over what the Old Testament Jews had done. Romans 10 chapter, reading from third verse. They, referring to the Jews, they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, God's righteousness, seeking to establish their own righteousness, you know, contrasted. See, when you say righteousness, you should find out uh, whose righteousness we are talking about. Are talking about Stanley's righteousness or uh, God's righteousness. We many times judge people according to our righteousness. That's where condemnation comes. When you judge people by man's righteousness, there will be condemnation. But when you measure people according to God's righteousness, there will be conviction leading to confession and cleansing. We must differentiate between what condemnation is and what conviction is. The Holy Spirit never condemns anybody. There is no condemnation whatsoever in whatever shape to those who are in Christ Jesus. But we will be convicted by the Holy Spirit. Conviction leads us to repentance and repentance leads us to cleansing. They being ignorant of God's righteousness, seeking to establish their own righteousness. You know, they wanted to establish it. Oh, what we have done. They have not submitted to the righteousness of God. The word submitted is used there to say, you have nothing to pride about or parade about. Submit. Submit to the righteousness of God. I come under that coverage, that covering. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who... Please, the just shall live by faith. 